Okay, let's start our conversation with the saying, On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. This is the saying on that time it was written. It's a proverb. It's a saying. So, may you know anyone who knows where in the Bible this saying is written? Do we have anyone knows where? Okay, so today we will know where is this saying written. Okay, let me greet everyone with Maligayang Pasco and in, in Tamil, Kiristimas Valtuko. In Malay, it's Hari Raya Natal. In Russian, yeah, you look for it. Because I don't, if you have time, you please look for it. Hindi <laughs> ko ng powers ko. So, yeah. Maligayang Pasko. So probably, actually when I was young, I have no idea what's the meaning of, the, I, don't, I don't have a, I don't understand if Pasko means Christmas. I have no idea. What, where does that word come from? Pasko. Do you have any idea? So most likely, it's, it comes sometimes from the Spaniards. It's a Spanish word. Usually the popular words or the saying that they say is Feliz Navidad. So actually it's a popular word, but it used to be, well, we call it Feliz Pascua. So if I will itemize the words, Pasco in Filipino, Pascua in Spanish, which is, they, it came from the Greek, which is Pasca, in English, Pascal or Passover. So if I say Maligayang Pasco, it, actually I'm saying Happy Passover. Because that, that's where we get our word in original sense. So we will talk about Passover. And I'll, I'll bring you to, to, to this uh, in Exodus about the Passover. So you have the idea what, why we call what, Pasco or Pasqua. What, what's the significance of that? So there are two events are we going to talk about today. That one is from Exodus and one from Genesis, which are related to each other. And this is what uh, the Passover is written in Exodus chapter 12. From now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you. So it means it's New Year. First month of the year, it's New Year for them. It's a- a- around March to April. That's the start of their year. It, they are doing lunar, new, lunar calendar. Announce to the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice. One animal for each household. So this, this is where I take in the title of this conversation. The perfect sacrifice. The perfect sacrifice. So actually, we're going to discuss and talk about what is the perfect sacrifice? Or should I say, who is the perfect sacrifice? Right? It's okay. Let's discuss about the Passover. So, you, so they have, you have a background about the Passover. Passover, God instructed them to choose for a lamb. Spotless, blameless, no blemishes, perfect lamb. A young male goat or a young male sheep, a lamb. And then they need to slaughter it on that night. And the blood of that lamb, they will need to smear on the sides or the top of the doorpost or door frames. And then, after that, they need to roast that lamb. Kailangan nilang ihawin. Hindi nila pwedeng i-adobo. Kailangan nilang ihawin ang lamb. And then they, they, don't, they don't break the bones. So they need to roast it whole. They cannot break it. And then they need to eat it inside the house. All of them. So that's the instruction of the Lord on the Passover. So why God instructed them to do this? Have you thought about it? Why? Because of this. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt. The Lord is speaking here. And strike down every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. So a little background. We are now in Exodus. If you watch the Ten Commandments movie or the Prince of Egypt. So this is the time when God sent plagues to Egypt. The nine plagues are finished. And each of those plagues is directly assaulting the gods of the Egyptians. So the tenth plague is the death of the firstborn. So what is, the, what, what is this plague? All of the firstborn male or animal or son will, will die. And because this is what the Lord said, I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. You see the word Lord, capital letters, L-O-R-D, or Yahweh, Y-W-Y-H. So it is... Uh, Actually, the Israelites, I mean, the Israel don't have vowels. So that's why, uh, actually, Pastor Bush mentioned this uh, 
last time. It's a tetragrammaton. Right? Have you heard it, Pastor, Pastor Bush? Actually, the first time I heard it, I thought it was tetramegatron. I thought it was a transformer. But, but tetragrammaton means tetra, four in Greek. Gramma or grammat means letter, which we get the word grammar. So tetragrammaton, the four big capital letters, the Lord. So if you see the capital letters in the Bible, it means Yahweh, the original name that God gave to Israel, the tetragrammaton. So, what are they going to do to escape the judgment? By the blood. The blood on your doorpost will serve as a sign marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. So, this is the, the Passover was taken. So, there are two meanings. First, the Lord will pass over you. Meaning, when the death, the angel of death comes to your house and they see the sign of the blood, he will not strike the firstborn. He will not kill the firstborn. Why? Because they see the sign. It shows that he trusted Yahweh. They put their trust to God. That's why God will pass over. That's one of the meaning. The sec- I want you to understand it very carefully. The second meaning of Passover is this. When this, the angel of death comes, instead of striking the firstborn, and he see the blood, he will see the sacrifice. He will pass over the judgment on that son and pass it to the sacrifice. So it means the blood itself is actually the judgment that fall to the sacrifice. That's another meaning of Passover. That's why you, you take note of this, and later we'll uh, show you more about, about this. And God asked them to always always celebrate it yearly. Every year, you need to celebrate and to do this. Why? Why? Why do they need to celebrate every year? Like Christmas, why we always celebrate every year? Your children will ask, what does this ceremony mean? Remember, the kids always ask questions. Dad, why does the sun go on shining? Right? <laughs> why the sea is blue? They have a lot of questions, right? And then you will reply, it's the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, for he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt, and though he struck the Egyptians, he spared our families. The Passover sacrifice of the Lord. So it means he wants them, especially when the kids already grown up, probably you, the kids never ask anymore, because keep on playing their gadgets, but you need to remind them. So that's the purpose of the celebration, to remind our kids, the next generations, what is the meaning of what we're celebrating for? We need to remind them. That's what God asked them to do, to keep on reminding them. Right? Remember? Dads, I mean, mom, parents, you keep reminding your kids, right? Fix your bed, right? You, call, you keep on t- telling that. Your shoes, put on your shoes on the rack. You keep, you keep on reminding your kids. Oh, they're like, like, your socks, why are your socks on the floor? Why are your socks on the floor? Actually, it's me. It's my socks on the floor. So it's my, my wife. Okay. Okay, anyway, you keep reminding. We keep reminding them. We keep reminding the generation, the, new, the young generation, why we are doing the celebration. The same thing that God is asking the Israelites. You keep doing this every year so that you will remind them what is the Passover sacrifice, which is a perfect sacrifice. And actually, in their terms, in their times, they thought it's just a lamb. But actually, it's a person. So that's why if you want to, I mean, if there is one truth I want to bring you today, is this. God's only son, Jesus Christ. God's only son, Jesus Christ, is the provision for our redemption. Ang anak ng Diyos, ang kaisa-isang anak ng Diyos, ang Panginoong Heso Kristo, ang ipinagkaloob niya sa atin upang matubos tayo sa ating mga kasalanan. God's only son is the provision for our redemption. So that's why, I want you to look carefully at the word redemption. So actually, if you look at the Google, they have uh, two meanings. One is to deliver from danger or to, to deliver from judgment. So in, the, in this time, they are slaves, right? The Israelites are slaves. So God wants to deliver them from the slavery. And of course, another thing is during the Passover, the God, God is executing judgment. So God delivered them from judgment. So that's redemption. Right? A second, 
is to buy back. So that's why I put the pawn shop over there. For in our case, right? Usually, we send or pawn our things in the pawn shop, and then we need to buy back if you want to regain our the, uh, I mean our possession, right? Last time when I was young, I thought the pawn shop is a TV repair shop. Mom, nai nasa yung TV. Where's our TV? Sira. It's on tambunting. It's in the pawn shop. So, four months, they haven't sent it to me. They sent it back to us. So that's why I was like, it was a pawn shop. But, but in, in previous time, the meaning of redemption is more on a marketplace word. It means to buy a slave. You buy a slave, and then you have, it's your prerogative if you want to free the slave. So that's why redemption is quite similar to, work, to ransom. It means you set the captive free when you pay the ransom. Set the captive free. So in, in, this, uh, in this word, we, we have now the idea what redemption is. Okay? So Moses, Moses is very instrumental for the redemption of Israel. Moses was raised like an Egyptian. He talked like an Egyptian. He walked like an Egyptian. He make up like an Egyptian. But he can sense that he's not an Egyptian, right? He can sense that he is a Hebrew. He can see the traits. So Moses' great-great-grandparent is Abraham. When God shows or reveals himself to Moses, God say, I am the God of your ancestors. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So which shows us that God is a personal God. He didn't say, I'm the God who created everything. No. He started revealing himself that I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the next event that we're going to talk about is about Abraham. That's why I said this is quite related. The 400 years prior to this event, the Passover, is the time when God tested Abraham. Okay, so this is the testing of Abraham. It's found in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 2. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will show you. Probably Abraham was wondering, how can God fulfill his promise, which is to have a descendant numerous than the stars in the sky, if God, if he will kill his son. So he was in dilemma, right? He was, he was wondering, probably will, God will do something. So early in the morning, he got up, he bring his son, bring, chop, chop some woods to, to prepare for the burnt offering, and he bring his, his servants. That's obedience. Can you imagine? That's how Abraham is so obedient. I uh, want to clarify, this command is not for us. Okay, I don't want you to sacrifice your kids. No, this command is only for Abraham. Okay, so be careful in every command. This command is specifically for Abraham. Okay, so that's obedience. So actually, if you read the Bible, that's not the first time Abraham was obedient. There's one time when God made a covenant to Abraham, and at that day, they sealed the covenant with circumcision. That day, all the male on his household were circumcised. Can you imagine? Abraham was 99 years old. Yeah, probably you have some, some questions. Right? I mean, if I'm a servant, I have a question. But being a servant, actually, you have no right to question. But there's someone asked a question to Abraham. And this, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, we had the sacrifice, the fire and the wood, the boy said. But where is the ship? for the burnt offering. So Isaac knows and understands about burnt offering. So Abraham answered, God will provide a ship for the burnt offering, my son. Abraham answered, which means God himself will give a lamb. So that lamb comes from God. When they arrived at the place when God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son. Can you imagine? Probably Isaac is around 20 to 25 years old by this time. And he tied his son. So can you see Isaac is obedient? 
like father, like son. So Isaac's obedience is a reflection of Abraham's obedience. So that's why parents, look, look at me, parents, it's very, very important, very, very important to show to your kids how you walk with God because you influence your kids. You have a big influence your kids. Like Abraham, he obeyed God, and then Isaac obeyed God like father, like son. Right? Like father, like son. That's why, that's why I also, I, I like it when someone appreciates my son. When someone says, you're handsome, I say, thank you. <laughs> no, because it will come back to you, right? <laughs> like father, like son. So what did Isaac did? He just obeyed God. So Abraham tied his son, Isaac, and laid him to the altar on, on top of the wood without any questions. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as sacrifice. So, you know, and then he wanted to strike his son. And that moment, the angel of the Lord called him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham. I believe that God hold his hand. I believe that God hold his hand instead of striking his son. Instead of saying, calling him, I think he's holding his hand before he strike his son. Then Abraham said, yes, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy. The angel said, do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Wow. That's why you need to read your Bible. Right? This is more than a Korean, to, Korean movie. You can only see it in the Bible. Right? Read your Bible. Really, these are, are, are good stories. You have not withheld from me even your son, only son. So when Abraham looked up and he saw a ram caught by its horns in a ticket, so he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. So can you see the similarities with Passover? This time, the, the ram was sacrificed in place to his son. The same in the Passover. Instead of the firstborn sons are killed, they were a, a lamb was in place for the firstborn son. So there, there is a similar, similarity here. That's why there is a foreshadow or pre-picture of what's going to happen. They, have, they, can, they didn't understand all, all of this. This is just a pre-picture of what's going to happen. And Abraham said, he named the place Yahweh Yireh or Jehovah Jireh in our most popular term. That's why some of our kids, we, we have this name Jireh or Jirel something coming from this, which means the Lord will provide. Sabi sabi natin sabihin, the Lord will provide. The Lord indeed provided a Savior. The Lord indeed provided a Savior of the world. To this day, it means the time it was written, people still use the name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. So the saying is actually in the book of Genesis. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. On the mountain. So probably they don't understand what is that mountain. So actually the Mor Moriah, some scholars said, Moriah is in range with, with Jerusalem. And some maybe they, they don't believe that. But anyway, when Christ was crucified, it's on the top of the mountain, Mount Calvary. When people look at Jesus Christ, he was crucified on top of the mountain. So they have no idea that what is provided what is sacrifice it's actually not a lamb not a anything or any gold or something it's actually a person was sacrificed they haven't seen what god is really saying to them on the mountain of the lord it will be provided that's why god's only son is the provision for our redemption this this truth is huge i want you to to, to grasp it why because there's no other world view. There's no, I want you to understand it. There's no other world view that says this truth. All of the world view, philosophies, ideology, is about effort, own effort to gain its salvation, to save himself, to save ourselves. Even those who don't believe in God, it's still by effort. Only the Christian, Christian belief where redemption or salvation was provided for us, was given to us. I remember a friend of mine, and I told him, you cannot go to heaven if you have one sin. And he was su surprised. 
What? I cannot go to heaven. I cannot enter the heaven for only one sin. It means all the good things that I have done cannot overweigh your one sin. Lahat ng ginawa mong kabutihan, hindi pwedeng matumbasan ng isang mong kasalanan. Because the requirement of the law, requirement of justice, is someone who sin or someone who commit crime, it will need to be punished. That's the, commit, that's the law. That's the justice. Remember, if you someone, someone uh, steal from you $1 million, all right? can someone say to you, I've been doing good to you for, for the last few years. So can we just be even? No, right? Even though you forgive someone, by law, you need to be put in jail. So Abraham and, and the Israelites didn't understand the meaning of the sacrifice. That sacrifice is giving a val- something valuable. Giving something valuable for the sake of someone or others. For their good. That's the meaning of sacrifice. So the apostles understand this. When after the resurrection, when Jesus said, I have come not to serve but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many, they didn't understand it. They only understand after the resurrection. That's why Apostle Peter said, For you know that God paid a ransom. Just now I said, ransom or redemption, something you paid so that a captive be freed, save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors, which is the tradition. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. It's written there. It was the precious blood of Christ. It was the precious blood of Christ. The sinless, spotless, perfect Lamb of God. The perfect sacrifice. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that saves us and paid the ransom for many. Wow. That's why this is the meaning of Christmas. Christmas is the fulfilled promise of God when He provided the perfect sacrifice for our redemption. Remember when God promised to Abraham? After he promised to Abraham, He will promise a son, which is Isaac. Then after Abraham sacrificed Isaac, God promised, gave him another promise. His promise is this, your offspring, your seed, will be a blessing to all nations. It is a future event. All your seed, it means one person. But this is what Apostle Paul said in the Galatians. The promise is not your seeds. This is what Apostle said. The promise is your seed, which means one person, which is Christ. That person is Christ. God made us holy by the blood of Jesus Christ. God made us holy because of what God has gained and provided for us. And that's the meaning of Christmas for us. And this shows how God demonstrates His perfect love for us. Remember John 3.16? We already know this. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the ungodly. For God so loved the sinners that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. That's the meaning of Christmas. It's a perfect demonstration of love. Amen? So what are we going to do? Since we understand everything, all of this, what are we going to do? Okay, young people, let me start. There are young people. Sometimes you are, wait, my, my mom is keep on repeating, keep on saying it again and again, right? No, because our, your parents, young people, your parents, they want the best for you. Now, means you, we, you, don't, you cannot use your gadget for how many, one week probably, or one month, or you cannot watch TV if you're grounded, right? But for us, a long time ago, we don't, when you say you're grounded, you have a choice, 110 or 220. It's electrifying, you know? It's shocking. When you say grounded, it's shocking. Yeah, really. So, I mean, the young people don't know that. Those are the days. Yeah, really? Some people here miss those days. So, listen. Young people, listen to your parents. And to our parents, I'm not asking you to celebrate Passover. Even though the last supper was during the Passover meal. This is a Passover meal. He's celebrating the Passover during supper. But 
Christ never asked us to celebrate Passover. Christ commanded us to celebrate what? The communion. Why? Because when you do this, you do it in remembrance of Him. Amen? That's why this Christmas, if you have a chance, yeah, you can do a communion to your house, like a Passover. Actually, a Passover is a family gathering. So if you have a chance, if you don't have a chance, it's okay. Just don't forget to remind your kids. Don't forget to remind the kids that God provided a perfect sacrifice. God provided His Son, His one and only Son, as a perfect sacrifice for us to be redeemed, to save us from our sin. Remind them. Help them know that God saved them. This is how God showed His love, right? Remember, God demonstrated His love for us. When we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Christ died for us when we are still sinners. And to all of us, I want you to, to see the, the next application of what we're talking about. I'm not asking you to go to a cruise. Probably you're so happy. <laughs> this is a very good application of everything. <laughs> no, no, I'm not asking you to go to a cruise. This is a, just an illustration about the, this cruise. So there is this family who wants to go to a cruise. And then the young teen, a teenager, don't want to go to the cruise. Why? Because there's no Wi-Fi. The young kids don't want to go to, I mean, the young teens don't, don't want to go to the, the cruise because what can I do there? I don't, there's no Wi-Fi. Anyway, he still needs to go with the family, right? And I mean, this is uh, this story for disclaimer. I, I have no intention to be similarities to your stories, right? So they went to this cruise, and then the captain and the crew are all terrorists. They're asking for money for all, all the one on board of the cruise. So they get the ransom. All the crews went off. But they do something to the ship. They put a hole and then the ship is started to sink. And this young man keeps on complaining, I should not be here. I already told my friends, I, want, I don't want to go here. Keep on complaining, keep on complaining. And then the government boat is coming to save, to save them, to save all, all inside the cruise, to save them. Sometimes we are like that young man. We keep on complaining and yet God already provided a Savior. God provided someone to save us. So it's either you just keep on, the, I know, keep on complaining, I, keep, I, I should not be here, or you go and take that bridge, going to the safe boat. It's your decision, right? It's either you just want to sink on that big cruise, or you go to the provided safe boat. God provided His Son. God provided His Son. And that bridge going to the safe boat is the bridge to us to God, His Son, Jesus Christ. It's a decision for you to make. God will not force anyone to go to heaven. It's a decision for you to make if you want to go to, to His place. Right? So what are you going to do? Accept God's provision. Accept his son, Jesus Christ. Why? Because God's only son, Jesus Christ, is the provision for our redemption. God's shala ang kaisa isang way, the only way for us to go to heaven, Jesus Christ. Just now, I, I told you about the pawn shop. Now, I, I'm just, uh, I mean, joking about the TV repair shop, pawn shop. Because when I was young, I really go to the pawn shop because my mom will ask me pay the interest for, the, for those valuable things that we, we put there as a guarantee. And then I realized that most of the people who go to the pawn shop, probably the young people have no idea because you haven't seen really some of the pawn shop here. But in the Philippines, if someone who go to a pawn shop, they are desperate. They are desperate. Because they don't have money. They just lend 
I mean, give as a, this, those things valuable to them just to get the money. Because those money, probably they need, they need something. They, they need those money probably for, to buy food or for the hospital bills. Those people who go to the pawn shop are desperate. I know that because I go to the pawn shop. They are desperate. There's no greater love than this when God gave His Son. So maybe some of us are desperate here. But I want you to know that you can complain, keep on complaining to this world that is sinking or you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Tatanggapin mo ba siya bilang tagapagligtas ng buhay mo sa mga oras na ito? Or you just bow down to Him and say, Lord, I'm desperate. So we're going to sing this song. And as we're going to sing this song, make it a prayer. Make it a prayer and speak to God. Lord, I want you to be my Savior. There's no prayer.